You know, I both hate and adore this show. I'm gonna give it a fresh tomato, at least based off of the first three episodes I've watched. And I'm curious as to how Apple TV will make this show available. I haven't been able to see any specifics. Again, they gave the press just the first three episodes. And I think that if they give the audience the first three episodes, people should talk about this show because it gets really good at the end of episode two. Um, otherwise, I think it's going to be a slow burn where maybe people don't discover it until the, like the end of the season, a little bit like succession, maybe. Um, this, this show has a lot of problems, but it's so aggressive and so different in the way it handles the Me Too discussion that it should generate its own discussion. And it would, I think, on many other services. But since it's on a new service, again, Apple TV, I will be curious to see if it can break through. All right, so let's review and discuss The Morning Show. So it is a surprisingly aggressive show, but also one that's often sloppy and panders so much to a certain group that at times, even that group will roll its eyes. Also, there's clearly nobody working on this show that actually has worked in morning news. And as a result, I think the morning show is often unfair to that very unique brand of programming. I mean, it's the most successful part of every single network's news division for a reason, right? I mean, I also think it's an odd choice because to be so disdainful to, to morning news, you think that would turn off the group that would be most interested in an expose of morning news, right? The people who watch it. But the morning show is so negative about morning news that even someone like myself who isn't necessarily the audience for morning news, well, even I felt it was unfair to the medium. Reese Witherspoon's character in particular is like, there's a scene where she pitches stories for morning news and you're like, those are horrible stories. I think anyone would notice that they weren't a fit with the show she's trying to be a part of. So that was a little weird. I was like, clearly everyone making this show not only doesn't watch morning news, but thinks it's dumb. And I think that's an odd approach to take to something you're covering. But there are blazing, that's right, blazing moments of brilliance on the morning show because it's so bold in its willingness to not only tackle the Me Too movement in the entertainment business specifically, there will be crossover though to other industries, um, but also in its willingness, and this is what's very surprising about the show, its willingness to address that it's not a black and white situation, but instead one far more complex. Those elements make the morning show a must watch. Also, to see these huge stars saying crazy stuff, like wow, being unusually honest and aggressive. We'll talk about that as well. Now, if you can make it to the end of episode two, when the first big power move is made, and it is awesome to see female characters making power moves, when in other shows like Succession, Shiv is annoyingly on the sidelines, both being put there by others and voluntarily sitting there. But if you can make it to the end of episode two, you will be hooked. It, I was like, I don't know about this show. And then I was like, I love it. As I said, but I don't know, as he, even as it progressed from there, again, I only saw the first three episodes, but I was like, I both hate and love this show. Now, by far, my favorite moments, though, are in episode three. So again, I wonder how many people will make it that far. If, again, if Apple makes it available to binge those first three, it's a very bingey show, by the way. I think it, I would binge, I would, I don't know. Yeah, I would, maybe chunks of three. You gotta watch the three episodes to really get it. But my favorite moments are, without it giving any spoilers away, uh, Jennifer Aniston's monologue to a boardroom full of men. I think there might have been a woman in there as well, but it was mostly men her bright red dress in stark contrast to their sea of dark suits. That was great. It was almost network-like, you know, right? Like, I'm mad as hell and I'm not gonna take it anymore. Uh, but with a female protagonist, which I thought was really great. And then also a searing conversation be between Steve Carell's Matt Lauer character and guest star Mar Martin Short, who plays a Me Too ruined director. They have a shockingly real conversation from the complicated reality behind a lot of these accusations to Mitch Kessler, uh, Steve Carell's character, beginning to realize that maybe his actions weren't as harmless as he thought they were as he sees them embodied in short, sitting across from him on his patio, looking back at him. That was, an, it was amazing. Powerful stuff, both those scenes. 
Now, interestingly, for a show about the Me Too movement and women in the entertainment business or just in business in general, the morning show's female characters are its weakest. None of them come across as real people, but living arguments, emphasis on the argument part. Uh, and while you want to root for them because they're fighting the good fight for women in business, both Aniston and Witherspoon's characters are so grating and so unbending, constantly yelling, that ironically they re represent the women in business stereotype that so many women find themselves trying to combat in real life. Aniston's character has no allies at the morning show, and she doesn't try to cultivate any either. Uh, while everyone, or well, not everyone, but a lot of people are bending over backwards to help Witherspoon's character, and she keeps fighting them off very aggressively. Uh, it's not good. It also doesn't help that Aniston and Witherspoon look strikingly similar, particularly in the way their groom, their you know their their hair and makeup is done on this show, and not only in terms of their look, but also their age. So having Witherspoon presented as Aniston's uh, potential younger replacement just seems ridiculous. Also, for a show about optics, I can't believe that nobody noticed how bad it looks to have talented, charismatic black women only behind the scenes producing for white women, particularly when women of color are dominating an actual day daytime TV right now. It's offensive and not accurate, so that was frustrating. But speaking of accurate, perhaps the best character on the show is Billy Crudup's network executive, the new head of news coming over from the entertainment division. He's the kind of behind the scenes character that everyone loves, and both his dialogue and Crudup's delivery are not only entertaining, but incredibly accurate again for a network executive. Love that, very real world. The only potential wrinkle, though, is that his character does seem to be romantically interested in Witherspoons. Many of their after-hours meetings don't seem quite right and would set off alarm bells in any woman working, right? Even though Crudup's character continues to insist he just likes working odd hours. But it's not just when they meet. There are a lot of odd hours in the entertainment business. There's just a vibe there, which I have to say would, in other circumstances, be totally fine if it's done above board and through human resources, right? But since Crudup is such a champion for Witherspoon's character, it's a little bit, a little bit iffy to think that she wouldn't have the position, she wouldn't get this amazing opportunity that she gets. It's not totally because of Crudup, but she wouldn't be put into play by Crudup if he wasn't interested in her. And then if it does turn out that he's interested in her, well, then will he become less of a champion for her? And will the show then be saying that there really is no such thing as a platonic male-female business relationship? It's real, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about it because I think it's somewhat, it could be somewhat accurate. Um, but I don't know, I think to not have any relationships where in the show depicted where men and women are just simply working together platonically is scary. So, but I, it's like kind of like the real world scariness of business relationships between men and women. So I'm not sure how I feel about it. Uh, Mark Du, but I do think Billy Crudup is doing a fabulous job. Uh, Mark Duplass is also good as the kind of inept showrunner that slowly kills the show with his lazy, lazy ineptitude. And it's pretty freaking obvious from episode one that he should also be fired. And I wonder if ever it will be realized by the characters on the show. It often isn't in real life. I mean, his character is, is, is incompetent, but so often is the case with people who are in charge in any business. Now, on that note, as the morning show progressed, at least the first three episodes, it became clear that it needed one episode up front, or maybe a flashback episode to come, to show what it was like at the morning show before Carol's character was fired, you know, at the beginning of this, at the beginning of the morning show, right? That's how, that's how they, they hit the ground running with his f being fired. Because there's just so much talk about how things used to be, both good and bad, that it would be nice to not only see what everyone's talking about, but to see how much of it is true and how much is their perception. For instance, again, how could Aniston's character be the lead on a show for so long, right? On, you know, she's the anchor, the co-anchor, and not have a single person on the show in her corner. Was Carell's character really her only ally? Is that why she takes his loss, his loss particularly hard, both personally and professionally? Which in and of itself I thought was very interesting. 
It's a very big question mark that hangs over the show and shouldn't be there, at least for not the entire first season. I'll forgive it if they do a flashback episode. Back to Aniston and Witherspoon. They are both obviously huge stars, and they use their star power as both a shield and a sword to play such grating characters, simultaneously to soften, soften their characters' edges through familiarity and the softer characters they've played in the past but also in getting you to pay attention to what they're saying because of who is saying it. This is Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon. You can't help but listen. If they're going to lose their shit, it gets your attention. And the same, I think, goes with Steve Carell. His Mitch Kessler says some horrible tone-deaf things, but you, you realize that Steve Carell wouldn't take this role if there wasn't something to it. So you listen. And I'm deaf listening to this show and I think if you can get through the first three episodes even just the first two you will be listening as well and if people don't listen to this show I do feel it would be the fault of Apple TV because I think it's a well I think it's it's a it's it's interesting and unique enough I think to cut through the chatter and there's a lot of chatter these days both in terms of streaming and the Me Too movement so that's my review of the first three episodes of The Morning Show. I'm curious to hear your thoughts down below. It debuts Friday, November 1st. We'll see how many episodes become uh, available to watch. Uh, if it's the first three, I recommend you power through them in one sitting, or at least I did it in two. But anyway, uh, sh again, share your thoughts down below. Be sure to subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more episodes right now. 